Hey everyone, Howie Fisher from Fisher's Flies. Thanks for checking in. Today I'm going to be tying up a rusty spinner in purple. This is kind of like a purple haze, but in a spinner version. This is a pattern that the Demuths tied up a couple weeks ago on Whip Finish Wednesday. For the hook, I'm using an A-Rex Freshwater 503. For the thread, I'm using Semperfly waxed thread in ADOT. This is their classic waxed thread in the color purple. I'm going to get started right behind the thread and start bringing my thread back to create a base for this fly. For the tails on this, I'm using an old makeup brush of my wife's actually, but paint brushes also work well. Um, I like this makeup brush style a little bit better on these smaller flies because the fibers are a little bit smaller, so it works better on these smaller patterns. I'm sure you could probably find some smaller or finer uh, paintbrushes out there as well if you wanted to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get four fibers and there are other patterns that um, do it like this. So I'm going to get four fibers and I'm actually going to split the fibers into two clumps if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and secure them on top of the hook and just make sure that I've got them where I want them and how I want them. And one thing that I forgot to mention is I actually don't snip off my thread here, uh, the excess or tag. I'm actually going to leave that on and I'm going to use that thread to split the tails. So I'm going to split them with my fingers a little bit. This is probably the trickiest part of the fly in my opinion. If anybody has any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Always love learning from other people. So. Like I said, I'm going to split them two and two, so two one direction, two the other direction. And then once I have them split, I'm going to go ahead and bring my thread up, hold it up, and secure it with my bobbin. I have found personally that it doesn't totally matter if they are in the perfect direction right now, because you can always go back and get them the direction that you want them a little bit later and they'll probably move around a little bit as you tie the fly. For the main body part on this fly, I'm using Turkey Biot Quills in purple. And I'm just using one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in by the tip. And I like to run this the full length of the body to help create an even smooth body and also to help get through that brittle tip uh, to prevent it from breaking off a little bit. You can, of course, cut it if you would prefer, but this is just my preferred method. So once I bring my thread back up to right behind the eye, I'm then go, going to go ahead and wrap this quill forward with touching or overlapping wraps, not touching wraps. And as you work your way forward, the nice part about a quill is it gets thicker, so it naturally creates larger segments. Once I get it to about the two-thirds mark or one-third mark on the hook, I'm going to go ahead and secure it and snip it off. You don't want to crowd the eye on this fly. On this specific one, I'm tying in a little bit of a foam hot spot, just using a bit of two millimeter or one millimeter craft foam. Here, this is actually one millimeter in orange. And I'm going to go ahead and tie it in just at an angle. For the wing here, I'm using McFlylon or Zelon if you have it, whatever you have in a gray color. I'm going to go ahead and take a piece and then split it into two uh, because this is a smaller fly. And I'm going to go ahead and take crisscross or X wraps over top of the wing to make sure that it's secure once I've got it where I want it. Pull the fibers up and take some wraps in front of to make sure it's not going anywhere. For the fly, dry fly dubbing here, I'm using Semperfly Kapok dubbing in fluoro purple. I'm going to go ahead and create a slim dubbing noodle here. Less is always more, when it, especially when it comes to dry fly dubbing. If you need to add more, you can always do that. You want a decently long one here on this fly because I'm going to wrap behind the wings twice and then I'm going to again crisscross wrap these like I did originally to secure the wing. I'm going to take two wraps in both directions and just to make sure that everything is covered underneath with the dubbing. And I'm going to go ahead and 
wrap forward to right behind the eye. Make sure everything's where I want it to be. And then I will whip finish and snip off my thread. This fly is pretty versatile um, and can be tied in a number of different ways. If you don't want to deal with the tails uh, and splitting those tails, you can use uh, other fibers if you want. They're a little bit easier to tie in and play with, uh, get where you want. Pheasant tail is one of them. Uh, CDL is another one. Whatever you've got, use it. Again, this is the Rusty Spinner in purple. Tie them up, fish them, let me know what you think. Thanks for checking in.